Hi, I'm Carrie, CEO, leadership coach, and master trainer. And I'm a design loving, DIYing, furniture flipping maker. This is my husband, Andrew's desk. We bought it on Facebook Marketplace for $40 and it's in dire need of a transformation. So we're gonna start with sanding down the paint. I'm gonna use my Festool and 120 grit sandpaper to take off what I thought was initially two layers of paint. There was black paint over top of a gray paint, but I've got it really down to the bare wood. This is a pine desktop. And if you're a DIYer, you don't need a Festool. This is a really powerful sanding piece of equipment, but it works like a charm. I freaking love my Festool. You can also see I'm wearing my mask. I wasn't at first. That's because the Festool has incredibly good vacuum suction and you can sand indoors, but I usually always wear mine for safety. I need to use some wood filler. Now I've had problems with wood fillers in the past, and so I'm always looking for the best products to use. I'm gonna try an Elmer's uh, wood filler product that's stainable because I'm going to be staining the top of the desk. And I've also got a pl plastic wood product that is really quick drying. Definitely not natural. Um, very chemically not wonderful in that regard, but every time I have found that I need to sand wood filler down, it gets crumbly and breaks or it junks up the bottom of my sanding pad and I have to keep cleaning the sanding pad because otherwise you get pigtails, which we don't want. All right, so here we go. We're gonna fill these wood holes, putting on the gloves for safety. And what do you know? I was right, this stuff is kind of toxic. I should be wearing a mask, so I'm gonna stop this and put on my rebreather. Back at it with my respirator. I didn't love the plastic wood filler, so I actually switched to the more natural Elmer's filler with natural wood fibers. I have finished wood filling all the gouges and scratches on the top. And while that's drying, I'm gonna move down to the base where you can already see I've started a bit of sanding. What's kind of interesting is every project you uncover something. So you can actually see the yellow coming through under um, gray, there's a gray leg back there, and then the black paint project that was abandoned. The top didn't have any of the yellow. It was only um, the light gray and then the black. So it's just one more layer to have to get through. Um, nothing too crazy, but I'm gonna start sanding the bottom of the desk. Let's sand down a bit more. I'm not actually gonna remove the drawer because there was just one and the hardware was actually quite complicated looking. So in fact, it was a little bit easier for me to just keep going. Now take a look at my sanding pad here. It's filled with gunk from the paint. That's because somebody used latex paint that when you try to sand off a latex paint instead of a mineral paint or a chalk paint, it's gonna gunk up. Think of latex gloves, they're kind of rubbery. So every time I was sanding it down, I'd have to scrape my sanding pad every few minutes with a metal scraper to scrape off the gunk and the process took a really long time. But here we are, we've got the desk nearly all stripped down and I'm going to take this Minwax Poly Stain in Antique Walnut and start staining the top. I'm gonna to be using a natural bristle brush to apply the product, which is what was recommended. And here I go. It goes on pretty smooth per the instructions. You wanna hold your brush at a 45 degree angle and make sure that you catch any drips that are coming off the side. As you can see, I didn't finish totally sanding the base of the legs because I'm gonna paint a portion of those. I also decided that because I could always go back and sand, I wanted to start working on staining the top of the desk first because I had multiple coats, it could dry between coats and I could finish working on some of the legs. All right, so I'm with the desk and remember, this is my husband's desk. He's a man that appreciates functionality. So one of the things that he asked for was grommet holes. So what I'm gonna be doing before I put the second layer of stain on the top of the desk is I'm actually gonna be drilling fairly sizable holes into the wood top, which is a little bit nerve wracking, but I've got my brand new Ryobi drill that I've researched is quite good for uh, DIYers, very powerful. I've got this special Lennox bit that I'll unpack here and show you in a moment as well. But the next step that I'm gonna do is 
measure off where I want the holes to be in the desk. And I'm gonna get that going now. I flipped the desk over. It was a lot easier to see what was going on underneath the desk. So you wanna make things easier for yourself. Just turn it on over. As you can see, there are support pieces to the top and the base and how it's all structured and glued together that had I picked a location on the top, I could have potentially been drilling through something I didn't want to drill through. So what I've done is I've measured out nine centimeters and five centimeters and found the same point on both sides of the desk. I also have this Lennox bit that is approximately, uh, yeah, it's two inches in diameter. And this can cut through both metal and wood. I have never used it before. So this is gonna be new. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this going now that I have the measurements made. Okay. Again, I'm using this new product that I've never uh, used before, but this is the Ryobi One Plus HP brushless drill. I've used, I used it yesterday. It's awesome. I'm a little intimidated when the bit looks like this, but I've got my safety glasses on. We're gonna see how it goes. Start slow when drilling. I'm not gonna lie, that was a little intimidating. I couldn't quite figure out how to get the drill bit going, but once I did, it was smooth sailing. So now on to the next one. Now that the grommet holes are finished, let's go back to working on the legs. I had a heck of a time trying to sand around the special features of the leg. I don't have a surf prep, which is the really spongy type of sander. And while I do have a foam cushiony pad for my fistule, I didn't find that it was working that well. Sanding the legs of this desk was a real slog. I will take great care in choosing my pieces of furniture that I flip in the future because anything that has rounded edges with deep insets that would be made on a lathe, ornate traditional furniture is really hard and time consuming to sand. Getting inside areas that have these really deep grooves is really hard and you can actually see a little bit of yellow paint left behind here. This is okay because I'm gonna paint this black but I'm gonna be staining the bottom half of the leg so with a, a two-tone look. So the stain that's on the top and the bottom half of the leg as well as the central drawer are all gonna be stained. So now we are ready to stain the bottom portion of the leg. I'm gonna go ahead and put on my rebreather for safety and we're gonna start staining the bottom of the leg and then we're gonna put a second coat of stain on the top. You can see that the grommet holes were drilled and sanded down I should have done those before the first coat of stain, but my husband didn't tell me that he wanted that until after the fact. So you can see that I had to um, sand down those as well. So the second coat of stain will cover all of that up nicely. Now it's time to stain the top of the desk using a second coat. While I did use the natural brush applicator the first time, I didn't love the way it went on. I didn't think it was as easy as using a lint-free cloth or even just a paper towel, quite honestly. So that's what I did for the second coat. I wanted to practice using a different technique, so I did end up using a paper towel. 
I have a safety warning for you. Anytime you're using an oil-based product that has the word combustible on the side of the can, you have to proceed with caution, especially if you're using rags. It's not just flammable, meaning that it would start fire if you held a match to it. Combustible means it can just spontaneously go up in flames because of the chemical process that's happening through off-gassing. So it's really important that you take safety precautions and I'll show you what I did with mine. I've got my rags in a well-ventilated space outside and they're drying here in the sun. You can see this one's already actually starting to dry. Once these are dry, you can dispose of them properly according to the instructions, but you need them all to dry out first. While my staining rags are drying appropriately out in the sun, we're going to go back inside and start painting. I am not going to prime this desk because I am using a product that has primer, paint, and a finishing top coat all in one. This is by Melange, Melange Paints, or their Melange One product, which I'm obsessed with. It goes on so smooth and thick and creamy, and honestly, in some cases, you really only need one coat of paint. It's such a beautiful product. I'm using a small paintbrush to get in all the little nooks and crannies, and then a larger angled brush to do the majority of the leg. The desk has been stained as well as painted. And now I'm taking an 800 grit, super, super fine sanding pad on top of just one of my sponge attachments for my Festool that I use. And I'm gonna go over my surface to take away any tiny little bumps and imperfections so that I can get a super fine finish. Now that I have all this sanded down with my 800 grit, really fine sponge, I'm gonna to wanna to wipe this all down with just light soap and water or a tack cloth because I've created a lot of dust on this and your second coat of stain or paint will not adhere to a surface that has that much dust. So we're gonna wipe it back. I was just using clear water, no suds, and a clean cloth, and I really, really wrung it out just so it was damp only to wipe back the dust. This is slightly damp, but not really wet, so I'm just gonna let it air dry as opposed to wiping it with a dry towel. All right, I am gonna to try to get a very exacting line between the black and the stained leg. So I'm gonna use painter's tape. And because this is round, I'm having to tear little tiny pieces because the straight edge is obviously not circular and it's going bit by bit, but this will give me confidence that I can go right up to where I want to have the paint and the stain meet and get a nice clear edge. Working with a desk, tabletop, or dresser, you do sometimes have to get on the floor, and I found that I spent a lot of time working on the floor with this particular project. There's the leg ready to be painted, and now I'm gonna go back in with my melange paint, give it a good shake, and use a really fine detailed brush to get an exacting line. So this is the back side. I'm not gonna release my full perfectionist tendency mode back here. I'm just gonna try to get a nice, good second coat. Chances are this piece of furniture will be backed up against the wall, but there's also a chance that it could be a central point of a room. Maybe not in this house, but a future house. And I've spent so much time refinishing it that it'd be nice for all sides to look really beautiful. So while I said I wasn't gonna unleash full perfectionist mode, the truth is I don't really know how not to do it. With all my pieces, I decided to make it look as great as possible. Are you ready to see the finished product? Here it is, this is the finished product. Andrew absolutely loved it and I was so happy with the way it turned out. It was a two-tone natural stain with the Melange One black jet paint. Look at the lines on those legs. It looked absolutely incredible and the top was so, so smooth. Probably the smoothest finish I've ever created. Look at how great those grommet holes turned out and the desk hardware were just spray painted black based on the original piece of hardware. I absolutely love how this turned out and 
can't wait to finish my next piece. If you love how this one turned out, check out my other videos as well. Bye for now.